This is Dr. Andrew Earls of Wrightwater Engineers, and the purpose of this video is to teach you how to calculate the two-year peak flow rate for the design of grass swales. Let's start with the basics. What is a grassed or vegetated swale? Swales, as opposed to ditches, are generally densely vegetated and have low longitudinal and side slopes to promote shallow, slow-velocity conveyance of runoff from small storm events. This helps to reduce the overall volume of runoff due to infiltration that occurs during conveyance, and the vegetation in swales provides straining and sedimentation benefits for the shallow flows. Not all open channels or roadside conveyances are water quality swales. Unless they are designed for shallow, low velocity flow in contact with vegetation, they are not swales, and they do not provide the same water quality benefits. There are two general methods that can be applied to calculate the two-year peak flow rate for the design of a swale. The rational method and the Colorado Urban Hydrograph Procedure, CUHP, in conjunction with EPA's Stormwater Management Model, SWIM. If you are only interested in the peak flow rate, the rational method is a much simpler approach than CUHP and SWIM. For most designs of swales in small watersheds, the rational method will be sufficient and that is what we are going to focus on in this video. So, let's go through how we apply the rational method to calculate a two-year peak flow rate. The rational method is truly as simple as multiplying three numbers together, but finding the right three numbers takes some work. Q is the peak flow rate that we are seeking to calculate, and it has units of cubic feet per second. C is the runoff coefficient, Runoff coefficients vary with the size of the event and the infiltration characteristics of the soils on site. I is the average rainfall intensity for a specified return period, two year in our case, that has a duration equal to the time of concentration. In order to determine the intensity, you first have to calculate the time of concentration. A is the final variable, and that is the area draining to the swale, expressed in acres. If you have a long swale, you may need to determine the design peak flow rate using this method at various points along the swale as the drainage area increases. Dimensionally, the units do not appear to work, multiplying inches per hour times acres to get cubic feet per second. However, the unit conversion from acre inches per hour to cubic feet per second is nearly unity, so there is no need for additional unit conversions with this formula. These are the general steps for applying the rational method. First, we need to know the drainage area and imperviousness of the watershed. These input parameters can be determined from topographic delineation of the drainage area boundary and delineation of impervious areas. After we know the drainage area and the imperviousness, we can determine runoff coefficients based on the imperviousness and the hydrologic soil group. The next step is to define the longest flow path from the drainage area boundary to the design point. When we calculate the time of concentration, this will be broken into overland flow and shallow concentrated flow travel distances. After we know the drainage area, the longest flow path, and the imperviousness, we can calculate the time of concentration. To calculate the two-year peak flow rate, we also need the rainfall intensity for a duration equal to the time of concentration for a two-year return period. The final step is to multiply the runoff coefficient, intensity, and area together to determine the peak flow rate and then do a reasonableness check on the results. I find that it is always important to do a reasonableness check when you're doing hydrologic calculations because it's really easy to make a simple error that can throw off your results. The first step in the process is determining the drainage area and the imperviousness. If this is being done at a planning level, you should use two-foot topography or better resolution if available. Watershed boundaries generally run perpendicular to contours, and the boundary can be delineated in AutoCAD or GIS. At a planning level, it's okay to use typical imperviousness values for land uses, such as those in Table 6-3 of the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual. Table 6-3 assigns imperviousness based on general land use categories, such as in industrial, residential, or commercial. For design level analysis, the imperviousness should be determined by delineating impervious areas on design plans in AutoCAD or in GIS. 
The outcome of this step is the drainage area and the total imperviousness. The next step is to determine the appropriate runoff coefficients. The five-year runoff coefficient is needed for the time of concentration overland flow calculation, and the two-year runoff coefficient is needed to calculate the two-year peak flow rate. The table on this slide is from the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual and provides formulas to calculate runoff coefficients based on the hydrologic soil group, imperviousness, and the design storm period. The manual also has a tabular data that can be used to determine runoff coefficients based on imperviousness and hydrologic soil group if you prefer using a table to one of the formulas in this table. The Web Soil Survey is a great way to look up the hydrologic soil group for the project area. If you don't know the soil classification at an initial planning level, just assume hydrologic soil group CD. This is conservative because these soil groups will have higher runoff coefficients and higher peak runoff rates. After the two and five year runoff coefficients have been determined, you are ready to move on to the time of concentration. The time of concentration is comprised of two components, an overland sheet flow travel time, this is called overland or initial flow time, and the channelized flow time. The overland flow time is the time that it takes for runoff to flow as sheet flow over the overland flow length before it begins to concentrate into shallow concentrated flow. We evaluate this component of the time of concentration separately because the hydraulics are different for sheet flow versus shallow concentrated or channelized flow. The overall time of concentration is equal to the initial or overland flow time plus the channelized flow time. We use an empirical formula to calculate the initial or overland component of the time of concentration. This is equation 6-3 from the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual. The overland flow time is calculated based on the five-year runoff coefficient, the overland flow length, and the average slope along the overland flow path. Keep in mind, with the time of concentration, we are looking for the longest flow path to our design point in terms of travel time. It may be necessary to check in several different locations to find the longest flow path. A common mistake in applying the rational method is overestimating the overland flow length. This can lead to overestimating the time of concentration and underestimating peak flows. A good way to estimate the overland flow length for an undeveloped site is to visit the site and look for the presence of rill erosion. Rill erosion is what often occurs on undeveloped land at the point where flows begin to concentrate. The distance from the drainage area boundary to the start of rill erosion is a way to estimate the overland flow distance for an undeveloped drainage area. For urbanized sites, the overland flow distance is often much shorter. The next component of the time of concentration is the channelized flow time. Flow does not have to be in an engineered channel or formal uh, conveyance for flow time to apply. Flow time also includes conveyance of concentrated flow in rills, gullies, gutters, or other site features where the depth of runoff increases beyond the sheet flow depth. The channelized flow time is pretty simple. Channelized flow time is equal to the distance traveled divided by the average velocity. The distance is defined as L sub t, and this can be measured from site mapping and field observations. The average velocity is calculated based on a Natural Resources Conservation Service conveyance coefficient. This provided in Table 6-2 of the UDFCD manual. This is multiplied times the square root of the waterway slope. The 60 in the formula is used to convert from seconds to minutes, since we want our time of concentration results to be in minutes. This is Table 6-2 from the UDFCD Criteria Manual. Conveyance coefficients are selected based on the channel or conveyance lining. The overall time of concentration is determined by adding the overland flow time and the concentrated flow time. This is the time that you should use for the duration to determine the appropriate rainfall intensity. There's an important check that you need to do on the time of concentration before you move on to calculate the peak flow using the rational method. We want to check the minimum time of concentration for the first design point. The variables in this equation are similar to those we used in our other equations. L sub t is the channelized flow length in feet. S sub t is the longitudinal slope of the channelized flow in feet per feet. I is imperviousness expressed as a decimal. 
This empirical equation is used to calculate a minimum of time of concentration. This is then compared with the time of concentration that you get from adding the overland flow distance and channelized flow distance, and the minimum value of those two is selected. We'll go through this in an example. So, this is our example. For this problem, we're going to assume the following information. Our goal is to calculate the two-year peak flow rate for a 1.6 acre drainage area that leads to a grass swale. The drainage area has an imperviousness of 30 percent, or 0 0.3. The overland flow distance is 200 feet, and the longitudinal slope is 3 percent, or 0 0.03. The channelized flow distance is 360 feet, with a slope of 2 percent, or 0 0.02. We will assume that our hydrologic soil group is group C from the web soil survey. So the first step is to delineate the drainage area boundary, determine its area, and its imperviousness. We're given this information in this problem, but normally you would do this step using topography and aerial photography or design plans. Next, we'll calculate runoff coefficients. We do this using the equations I showed you earlier, which are in the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual. Inputs for the time of concentration include the five-year runoff coefficient, which we can determine using the equations in Table 6-4 that I showed you earlier from the UDFCD Manual. We need to know that they're hydrologic soil group CD soils with an imperviousness of 30 percent, and that gives us the information we can plug into this equation for the five-year runoff coefficient. When we do that, we calculate a five-year runoff coefficient of 0 0.28. We repeat the process for the two-year runoff coefficient. We select uh, the appropriate equation from Table 6-4 of the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual for the two-year event. Um, we have hydrologic soil groups of C and D and an imperviousness of 30 percent. And when we plug that into the equation for the two-year runoff coefficient, we calculate a two-year runoff coefficient of 0 0.22. Now, we would expect the two-year runoff coefficient to be lower than the five-year runoff coefficient, and it is, so that's a good check on our math. After we calculate the runoff coefficients, we're ready to calculate the overland flow time based on the five-year runoff coefficient, the overland flow length, and the slope of the overland flow path. The equation we use is equation 6-3 from the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual. Be sure that the longitudinal slope is in feet per feet, i.e. expressed like a decimal. When we plug in a five-year runoff coefficient of 0 0.28, an overland flow length of 200 feet, and a longitudinal slope of 0 0.03 feet per feet, we calculate an overland or initial flow time of 14.6 minutes for this example. After we calculate the overland flow time, we can calculate the channelized travel time based on the channelized flow length of 360 feet, which was given to us, and a longitudinal slope of 2 percent, or 0 0.02 feet per feet. For the conveyance coefficient, we will assume paved areas, such as a gutter, for this urban site. For the paved areas, a conveyance coefficient of 20 is used in accordance with Table 6.2 of the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual. That's the table with the NRCS conveyance coefficients. When we apply the travel time formula with the unit conversion from seconds to minutes, we calculate a channelized flow time of approximately 2.1 minutes. This seems pretty reasonable for a short paved reach. The water would be flowing fairly quickly over a short distance. Once we've calculated the overland or initial flow time and the channelized flow time, we can add these two times together to get the time of concentration to our design point. In this case, our calculated time of concentration is 16.7 minutes. Now let's remember we need to do our check on the first design point time of concentration. So we're using information that we're already given with the longitudinal channelized flow length of L sub t of 360 feet, an imperviousness of 30 percent, 0.30, and a slope of 0 0.02 for the channelized portion of the flow. When we plug that into this equation and we crunch the numbers, we come up with a minimum time of concentration using the first design point check of 24.1 minutes. So what we want to do is to compare this number that we just calculated with our calculated time of concentration of 16.7 minutes. 
We're comparing these to find out the shortest time to the first design point. Since our calculated time of concentration of 16.7 minutes is lower than our check of 24.1 minutes, we're going to use 16.7 minutes for our calculation. If our calculated time of concentration had been greater than 24.1 minutes, we would have defaulted to this 24.1 minute value. But since the 16.7 minutes is lower, that's what we will use. Uh, for a calculation of the peak flow rate. So, the next step after this is to determine the rainfall intensity corresponding to the duration of the time of concentration, our 16.7 minutes. The Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual includes a formula that can be used based on the one hour point precipitation depth, or you can look up intensity duration frequency statistics in NOAA Atlas 14, which is online, and interpolate between the values that were reported to get an intensity corresponding to your specific time of concentration. In this case, we're just going to use the formula provided in the UDFCD manual with a one hour point rainfall depth of 0.78 inches that was determined using NOAA Atlas 14 and the assumed location of our project in Boulder, Colorado. This is usually easiest if your time of concentration does not correspond to the one of the easy values from NOAA Atlas 14. You can also do linear interpolation between NOAA Atlas 14 results, but unless your duration or time of concentration is 5, 10, 15, or 30 minutes, typically it's easier to use these equations from the UDFCD manual. Now, it's very important to note that these equations are specific to the front range of Colorado within UDFCD's authority, so these should not be applied on the west slope or in other areas. In other areas, go straight to NOAA Atlas 14 and look up the values and interpolate if you need to. So, when we plug in our time of concentration and the hour point precipitation value of 0.78 into this intensity equation from the manual, we calculate a rainfall intensity of 1.6 inches per hour, occurring over our 16.7 minute period. Now, we finally have all the information that we need for the rational method. We know that our drainage area is 1.6 acres. We just calculated a rainfall intensity of 1.6 inches per hour and we determined a two-year runoff coefficient of 0.22. We multiply these three numbers together, and the resulting calculated two-year peak flow rate for design of our swale is 0.6 cubic feet per second. That concludes this video. I hope that this will help you to apply the rational method to design swales on your own projects.